Okay, we're going to do a review on the smart, a redo on the smart gun argument. I'm going to post the link below to the last video I made. This video is going to be made after having seen some more information on it. And we're going to get a little more action. Talking points we're going to go over. Now, um, a guy I went to high school with showed a video, one of those little real small like 30 second clips on Facebook about how good the smart gun technology is. And obviously it shows that the smart gun's one argument, the only good argument. And that is that if the, if the wrong person gets the gun, they can't use it without the receiver, receiver, transmitter, blah, blah, blah. And obviously because the person that was making the video and the people making the smart gun have no clue what in the blue fuck they're doing, they're not going to talk about the real issues. And this guy was talking about it, I want to ask this guy in, the people he knows who are coming on arguing about it, and, they're, they're, and people he knows are really going to fucking choke him out. They're, um, uh, you know, they're like saying, you know, what the fuck you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying, okay, when the smart gun comes out, you buy it, and you check its reliability versus the reliability of your other guns. You know, your hammer fire guns, your striker fire guns, etc. And then you get back to me on it. Okay, now obviously I'm talking to three or four people that have literally, I'm not even joking when I say this, by the way. They've never seen a gun in their lives outside of a police officer's holster. Okay, they never fired a gun, never owned a gun, never used a gun, never studied self-defense, never studied combat, never studied any of that stuff. They have, it, it's like if you were to fucking go into a hospital and start arguing with a doctor. Okay? Okay. You're arguing a point that you have no comprehension what the fuck you're talking about. And granted, some people don't know everything. I understand that. You know, I don't know about rocket science. Okay? I don't know how to do hair. Okay, but yeah, hair, right? Um, but yeah. So now I'm gonna go over some talking points. Now I'm gonna start with the things that could be adjusted, and I'm gonna continue down to the absolute shit. Um, the unfixable problems. The grip. A gun's grip must be good, because you might be sweating. You might have a cut in your hand, you might have just washed your hands, you got your hands just soap and water on them and you don't have time to dry them with a towel, okay? You might have a missing finger, okay? The grip must work, period. The smart gun is as smooth as dick shit, okay? It has no grip, none. Now obviously you can probably mend your, that yourself. I've seen a guy on YouTube a couple of years ago, he was making Glock grips with skateboard tape and a couple of you know take the skateboard tape and cut it at this angle and put it around here and go around and like that and go over like that and then go like that and then go like that and like that and like that okay and then voila he has no grip he has a new grip okay or the factories could start to do that they could start to do some kind of LPI work or some kind of hog or rubber. I mean, things can be done with that. You can get aftermarket things, okay? So that is not a problem in itself. Now, I'm gonna have to function these guns, so I gotta empty them now. I got my 1911 here in my Glock. I'm gonna have to empty them because I'm gonna use functions now. Okay. Okay. Put the ammo over on one side. Now the buttons here, and they are now clear. You got this button here, which I'm not that crazy about, and it's okay. Once I was renewing my arm guard, I hit the button by accident. Once I was at the handgun range in Yonkers, I hit the button by accident. This one I like a little better, nice and rounded, a little easier to understand. I mean, it, yeah, this I like better. And because I'm left-handed, I go like this with the gun. That was told to me by our city marshal a long time ago. Um, now some people have the grip down here, like in the 
War, a couple of Walter guns and people on the channel complain about this by the way and a couple of HKs have the grip have the mag release here down here okay the magazine release on the um, uh, smart gun is just like fucking cartoon okay it's just gun the fucking big and under pressure whether you're doing this or whether you're doing this okay under pressure you're gonna be fucked up with that Okay, you are not. You are gonna be. You are gonna be hitting the magazine release by accident because it's just too fucking dopey. Obviously, that can be fixed with the factory. Not a big deal. Now we're gonna go a little down a little bit. The price. Okay. Now, as you know, a Glock is about four to five hundred dollars. Six at the most. Nineteen elevens, depending on whether you're going rock on armory or Wilson combat, can be four hundred dollars to five thousand dollars. Okay, some CZ guns I've seen, especially when you go to the CZ custom shop, you could easily spend eighteen, nineteen, two thousand dollars on a gun. No question. Depending on what features, make, model, whatever. Okay, and you see guys with open, they're shooting open division, and they get a gun that costs a thousand dollars out of the box, and they spend two thousand dollars pimping it out. Okay, no question. You could you could easily go up, but. Some people can't afford certain guns, okay? And I'll tell you right now, I'm not in that situation now where I'm going to buy a $5,000 Wilson Combat. Yes, I know they're the best guns around there, but I don't know if I'm in the position right now to buy a $5,000 gun. I have a $1,000 gun, which is just fine. This one. The Wilson Combat Magazine, no big deal. But, and other people have a very, very below the poverty line. They're, they're poor, and they have to buy a high point. Now, the high point is the ugliest gun in the market. I'm not going to argue with that at all. And it costs about $150. I'm not going to argue with that at all either. But I've seen Eric and Barry, God rest Barry's soul, um, torture test the high point to the point where the high point fired with the railroad spike in it. They literally drove a fucking railroad spike down the barrel and fired it. Okay, that's pretty good reliability for 150 bucks. Price of the smart gun is about eighteen hundred dollars total. It's twelve hundred for the gun and six hundred for the transmitter. The transmitter is going to be a watch, and I'm not wearing a watch now, but we wear our watches on our secondary end because I might be reading a paper. Okay, it's ten thirty. Okay, I might be writing something. Oh, eleven thirty. I might be, you know, playing my fucking gun. Oh, quarter after one. Okay, we use our secondary hand for our watch because A, we want to have our dominant hand functioning while we look at our watch. It is me a watch. Um, we also like to um, uh, use our dominant hand to strap buckles, especially if you got fucking bum fingers like me. Okay. That price could come down a little bit, but here's the issue. Are you going to pay 1800 bucks for a gun? Okay. Is it a good gun? Is it reliable? Well, that brings us to the next point, durability. Now, durability. The smart gun is only available in 22. And you're gonna have a guy say, well, I have a Ruger 1022 with a BX25 mag and I put hot loads in it and I use it for home defense. Okay. But most people will argue against the 22 for home defense. We can argue for 9mm, 40, 45, Magnum, 357, 38 this, uh, uh, four, um, 44 that, uh, 5.56 this, 7.62 by 39 that, 28 this, bird shot that, buck shot that. So we, we, can, we can literally go back and forth with that for six hours and just bleed, have our mouths bleed over it. But most people will agree the 22 is not suitable for self-defense. Also, the 22 is the only bullet that the gun can handle. We have a problem here. Now, Agnes Hobdell from uh, CZ was talking to nothing fancy yet on him again in 2011. And Agnes Hobdell whipped out the CZ Protec gun, which is an alloy frame gun, costs $1450, there we go with that price again, and it has everything done to it. Polished this, melded that, um, tampered this, uh, 
angle that, knocked off this, and they make the gun so smooth and nice and cool, and it looks like a really nice gun. It's 9 millimeter, by the way. And it has, you know, adjustable sight this, nice sight that, I mean, it, it looks like a nice gun. Agnes said, the gun will function with a few hot loads of plus P, 9 millimeter plus P, but you shouldn't use that a lot. You should use a couple rounds of 9 millimeter plus P to test it. You should use regular 9 millimeter when you're just firing it, and you should shoot it just to know, you know what you're doing with it. Because if you shoot it too much, if you shoot too much hot and banging shit out of it, it will eventually wear out. And Agnes Hobdell recommended that you buy the CZ Protec gun, shoot it just so you know what you're doing with it, and then you buy a steel gun, like a steel 75 or a steel shadow or some, some shit like that, just to practice with that, because the steel gun will last forever. I want my gun to last, okay? I've seen guys shoot Glocks, 9mm this, 40 caliber that, 40 caliber that. I've seen them shoot tens of thousands of rounds out of the Glock and it's still good. The um, 1911, and I gave this example before in a few other videos. There were 1911s made in the 1940s. They survived World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and the 70s and 80s. In the late 1980s, Force Recon kept the 1911 and they pimped them out. And they made them look like this basically. Combat Hammer, Combat Trigger, Ambi Sight, Novak, Ambi Safety, Novak Sight. Hold on. Yes. Yes. Thirty-four. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Phone call from the mother. And I have a bad. I have a bad uh, editing software, so I gotta. You know. Anyway. So you know they 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 pimped the nineteen eleven out. Then they shoot fifty thousand rounds out of it. They gut it and they pimp it out again. And the frame in 2002, the Marine Corps Force Recon said the frames of these guns have a half a million rounds in them. Keep this in mind. From the 1940s until the 1980s, no one was counting. And that 500,000 rounds was counted in, in 2002. So from the 1980s to 2002, half a million rounds. And then they were kept in service for 10 more years until they were replaced by the new Colt Marine. That desert, you know, that, that, that um, uh, rail gun with the desert finish that cost, yeah, okay? So they got their money's worth out of those guns. Those guns were in service for 70 years and fired well over a million rounds. And then you know what they did after that? They sold them on the open market and civilians can buy them now with the CMP marksmanship and all that bullshit. Okay, you can buy a new sock if you can find one. Okay, that's called reliability. Okay, if you tell me that the gun can only fire 22, my question is how many rounds can it fire before it blows up or some shit? Malfunctions. I took a, a brief clip out of an article, and the article did say that, I forget what, it's not, it's not on this little clip here, it's somewhere else, but the gun had a tendency to malfunction a lot. The gun has a 10 round magazine, which a lot of people like in, you know, communist politicians like, but 10 rounds or not, the, every magazine would always fail. There would be feeding problems, damn problems. Now, one thing about... Um, a home uh, defensive gun, home defense, just carry that, do that, whatever, off, do that, whatever. The defensive gun has to have as few malfunctions as possible, if any, period. Okay, so this shit about, well, the magazine fucking jams every couple of rounds, okay? Every magazine has a couple of jams in it. That's unacceptable, okay? My three cent Glock magazines always fucking jam. You know what I did? I bought the Wilson Combat mags and then I went back. Okay, Larry Victor says it's the greatest magazine in the world. I believe him. Okay, so you could get a better magazine, but the point is, 
The magazine's fucking off. It's jamming. What, what, what the fuck is going on there with that? So those are the malfunctions. Now, I guess you could talk about malfunction and reliability and transmit it in the same sentence. Okay. The armor ticks pistol initially required a full 20 minutes to pair with the watch. Even with the aid of an IT pro trained in its use, whatever. Without pairing, the gun functions like any other handgun. Can be fired by anyone. In other words, if you buy the gun out of the box, it can be fired by anyone until you pair it with the transmitter. Once paired, a cold start will require seven push button commands and a duration of 12 seconds. So that means that the gun is off. Now, right now this gun is off. It's on. Okay? Right now this gun is off. Oh shit. Yeah, door, right? See? Fuck. Look who's fuck look who's fucking talking about the nineteen eleven here. Okay. Okay? That right there was a live test malfunction. Now it's fully loaded. happened they must have got hung up I looked in the breach there's no one by the way there's no one home there's no one in the room okay that's a wall I was safe okay I was completely this whole area is safe don't worry don't worry about that but what you saw was a real life test I tried to get these guns into service which included plus P plus one rather I'm sorry but even you know if I absolutely couldn't get the round in the chamber for 10 plus one or whatever I could have just fucking spent that you know but See, that's me getting both of these guns into service, including um, an incident where the magazine was jammed in a little bit and I had to slam it a couple times and rack it a couple times. Okay? So that included a little malfunction there in a real world test. Okay? Did I have to push seven buttons? No. I pushed a couple. I pushed the mag release to take the mag out and put the new round in, okay, and top it off. And on this one, I pushed the safety down and safety up. Okay, so that's a button, that's two. Okay, so I loaded two handguns and I pushed three buttons between two handguns. Okay, so two handguns, three buttons, as opposed to one handgun, seven buttons. Okay, and it has to wait 12 seconds. Well, the minute the guns were closed, they're ready to go. And in theory, if I did not have time to take the magazine back out, put the other round in, put the uh, okay, if I didn't have time to do that, the gun still would have been ready. It would have had one less round in it, but it still would have been ready. Okay? Yeah. So, that's that. Now, can I afford, assuming the gun is not on, can I afford to push seven buttons and wait 12 seconds when the door is being kicked in or when I'm being attacked? No. Okay? And the thing has to be 10 inches away. That's also reliability of the transmitter. Okay? If the transmitter has to be within 10 inches, I'm sorry, it can't be more than 10 inches, I'm sorry. It cannot be more than 10 inches away. If the transmitter has to be within 10 inches, what if this arm is broken? What if this arm was knocked off by a fucking 12 gear shotgun blast, okay? What if this arm is pinned behind my back and the guy is banging my head against the wall or the, or the ground and he's choking me? Okay, and I, I know you're saying, get used to carrying the transmitter in the dominant hand, okay. What happens if it's ripped off? What happens if the bad guy cuts you up with a knife? What happens, if he, what happens if it's smashed on the concrete? Like, I'm tackled, and the guy's fist fighting me, and the, the watch is slammed on the, on the concrete, it breaks. And I gotta, okay, that is unreliable bullshit. Okay, that is nonsense. It might work well at the range, and it might work well if there's, you know, a kid trying to get the gun, but in a real world defensive scenario, well, it might work with a hunting gun or a target gun, but in a real world defensive scenario, 
that is unacceptable. Because I have to be able to take this gun out of the box and load it and use it when I buy it. Once I buy it, it's always loaded, but I'm just saying in theory. I do not have time to push 12 buttons, wait 7 seconds, no, 12, push 7 buttons, wait 12 seconds, cold start this, okay? You ever have a problem with your um, iPad, iPhone, I this, uh, whatever? You got, when I did my last video on smart guns, I had to take the camera, take the memory card out, reload the battery out, reload it, and reboot it. Okay, and I did a video on smart guns. Can I do that with my gun if I'm being attacked? No. Now, your iPad, your iPod, all of the bullshit. What if it gets wet? It breaks. Okay. This computer technology, is it going to break? If I have a smart gun, is it going to break if I get it wet? Well, if your electronic device gets wet and breaks, you can just go buy a new one. It might be a pain in the ass, might lose a little bit of information, but you can just buy a new one. Okay. If my defensive gun fails because it got wet or because it got muddy, because it got dirty, because whatever the fuck, okay, can I buy a new life if I'm killed? No. Can I buy a new arm? My arm is blown up. No. And I was asking this question. I asked this question to the guy with the high school and his friends, the idiot fucking friends. And I said, what if I dip it in water? Will it work? What if I dip it in mud? Will it work? What if I... What if the transmitter fails? Can I fix it in two seconds when my eyes closed? And one of his idiot friends was like, well, so what you got, I mean, he's like, well, come on, man, so what? You gotta push a fucking button, you know? What's the big deal? I said, well, my, um, uh, my 1911 and my M1 carbine have positive safeties. So, it's not about pushing a button. It's about, is the button gonna be reliable? Is the button gonna freeze on me? But I said, and then the guy's like, well, no gun will work. He said, no gun will work. If, 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 he said to me, if you dip the gun in water and dip it in money, you can't clean it in two seconds. And I said, no. I said, if I dip it in water, or if I dip it in mud, or if it malfunctions. Okay, if I dip it in water, will it work without being cleaned? If I dip it in mud, will it work without being cleaned? If it malfunctions, the transmitter fails, can I fix it in two seconds with my eyes closed? He's like, no gun can fire if it's got water. No gun can fire if it's got mud in it. No gun can fire if it's, you know, you can't fix it in two seconds. I said, okay. I said, there is a gun that can fire in water when it's dipped in water. There is a gun that can fire when it's dipped in mud without being cleaned. There is a gun that can be cleared, that can be fixed in two seconds. It's called every gun. Okay? Remember what, um, uh, What our friend um, uh, Clint Smith always says: "Fire! It won't pack crack fire." Okay. Remember, Clint Smith always says that with any gun, you use the Sig, a 1911, and a Glock. Pack rack fire. Okay? If you cannot clear the gun with pat, rack, and fire, don't buy it. Okay, don't buy it. And this is what people never fucking, excuse me. <coughs> this is what guys never fucking understand. Alexa, stop please. The memory's running low on the chip. If you, I mean, this is a life-saving device. It's not a phone. It's a life-saving device. And if it cannot perform these tests, don't buy it. When this gun went for the trials in 1911, they dipped it in water. They dipped it in sand. They dipped it in thermaldehyde. They ran mag after mag after mag through it, and it would not fail. That's why it is the standard by which they're all measured. This gun fired the, the, the 17 version, is rather, the 17 fired about 17,000 rounds I heard my mate told me one time okay so this is all bullshit okay thank you